using our Nomiya Frozen Ramen Kit that you have purchased recently. My name is Wing and I'm from Nomiya and, uh, and I just want to say thank you so much for supporting our business by purchasing a ramen kit from us. Uh, everything that is in your kit is uh, homemade, handmade, uh, all from our, from our own locations uh, at either at Calgary Trail or here at Nudabar. Um, and so just know that you're buying quality, um, quality food that is well seasoned and definitely I would say I would even feed that to my children uh, because that's how good it is in my opinion. Now in your frozen ramen kit today, this is what you will find. You'll find a package of soup. It's either miso flavor or shio flavor. Today um, my demonstration will be using the miso uh, broth. You'll get one of these packets too for topping. So there's corn and Naruto and um, bamboo that we uh, had already marinated at, with um, our own special shoyu or soya uh, marinade. And our handmade ramen, of course, there's two in a pack. And then our uh, buta kakuni. Buta kakuni basically means it's pork belly in Japanese. Um, now these are already cooked um, and they're already torched so that they have that really nice smoky flavor. And so um, to prepare for this video, I have already boiled some water here in this pot. Uh, today I'm only gonna make one portion, simply because there's only myself here at Nuda Bar. But if you were to make it at home, I would recommend using about two liters of water and just boil it. It has to be rolling hot, uh, roll, rolling boil. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on right here in this pot. And then in this pot, I have our ramen, our miso ramen soup in here that I just basically opened up our packet and put it in a pot, uh, kind of like a low, low temp, low, low medium heat and just let it kind of simmer. So I have a pot of hot water boiling uh, or coming to boil right now. And then I want to cook this um, soup, warming it up at the same time. Cooking the perfect ramen is really key. Um, the key to cooking the perfect ramen uh, um, rather is timing. Timing is essential because um, if the ramen gets too cold, it doesn't taste good. If the noodles get too soggy, it doesn't taste good. So having everything kind of ready to go is really essential to the success of the bowl that, you, that you're going to enjoy at home. Now some of the things that I want to add to my ramen today, and it's just something that I found kind of here in this kitchen that I'm sure you'll have at home as well, is um, vegetables. I love vegetables and I really like seasonal vegetables um, in my ramen. And who's to say you can't, um, why do you have to follow a restaurant recipe when you can make it your own, right? So some of the things that I have that I'm gonna put in my ramen today is uh, tofu. I have some bean shoots that um, I like to toss in my salad. So I'm gonna toss it in my ramen as well. I'm gonna have some carrots and oyster mushrooms. Uh, and of course, the also essential is green onions. We try to freeze green onions for the kit, it just doesn't work. So if you guys have any in your garden or in your fridge, please toss it in there. And one thing that I forgot to bring today is cilantro. Uh, cilantro it really adds a kick to the ramen. However, if you don't like cilantro, leave it out. But onions is essential, so please make sure you have onions. And of course, we have to add an egg. So today, um, instead of going with the traditional ramen egg, I actually did a quail egg and I pan fried it sunny side up. And that gives it just a different type of texture. And plus it's acrylic, so it's a little bit smaller. Um, so it will pair up really nicely with everything I have going on. Now with the oyster mushrooms, lately um, in the home kitchen world, uh, the air fryer is very popular. So I have one at home too and we use it all the time. And so here at Nomiya, at Noodle Bar, I don't have an air fryer, so I have a traditional deep fryer. So what I did was, I cut this into strips and I deep fried it, so that when I um, am dressing my noodles, it gives me a different type of texture. So here you are, I cut them into strips and then I deep fried it. Uh, and I haven't seasoned it at all. So, you know, um, I usually will season things right before uh, I serve it. So uh, I will season this a little bit later. Some of the things that uh, you can add to your soup, of course, is uh, spices. So you're welcome to add chili oil, that's also really good. Uh, onion oil, um, or even sriracha. Sriracha adds a great, add a really good kick um, to, to your ramen. 
Now, today, because I have miso, I just want to give you um, just a little bit of background what pairs up really well with miso, what pairs up really well with shio. Uh, miso is a heavier type of ramen, and so uh, it's a type of heavier soup. So things that are a little bit heavier, a little bit of oil, um, you know, like the guta kakuni will pair up really well because it has so much oil in it. Um, the fried egg will be really good, uh, you know, yeah, things are a little bit heavier will be great with um, the miso soup. Now something with shio, it's a lighter base uh, soup and it's actually one of my favorites. Things that will go really well with the shio uh, and it's a salt based soup is things like seafood, things like wakame, seaweed, um, something a little lighter, maybe a yuzu, yuzu juice if you have any at home. Um, chicken will go really well as well. So think, just think light when you, think, when you have a shio soup and when you have a miso soup, think a little bit heavier, okay? Uh, okay, so our, our water here is boiling, um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this noodle out of this packet, and it, it's still frozen, the center is still frozen, so I'm just going to drop it inside the soup there, and then I have chopsticks here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of wedge my um, chopsticks into the noodle. I'm going to bring you closer. Sorry, I'm on my own today. So I'm going to... idea is to wedge it right in the middle and then kind of quickly over in the water just kind of break them apart not break them apart but kind of separate the noodles and by doing so once it's separated just count them for a bit about a minute a minute and a half and your noodles are ready to come out now while that cooks it's pretty much separated so I'm going to do about a minute a minute and a half pound down now while that is cooking what I did was, um, prior to starting the video today, what I did was I did take the puta kakuni and I microwaved it for 45 seconds. Uh, I cut off the top so that there's air to ventilate and then I microwaved it for 45 seconds. Now, that should be good enough. Um, you know, we have a really standard uh, microwave here at Nomiya. So, you know, I think it's about the same strength that you have at home. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I, I microwave this for 45 seconds. It's kind of, no, it's no longer frozen. What I'm going to do, and if you guys have this at home, feel free to do it. I'm just going to quickly torque it. I'm just going to quickly torch this so that it has a really nice aroma to it before plating. And that's all I need to do. They're not clumpy at all, and they look marvelous. They have a nice sheen to it. Um, actually, when I tasted it, it was just about 70% done. So this is probably about 85, 90% done. I don't want to cook it all the way through, simply because I'll be putting soup in it, and with the hot temperature of the soup, it will continue to cook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my noodles in here. We like to do the restaurant here we like to kind of make a bed with the noodles so you kind of 
kind of lift it up and bring it over so that it's nice and neat. I actually find using tongs much better than uh, than using chopsticks, you know, short, short chopsticks like this. So here's my noodle. We have a nice bed. So I'm going to dress it up. I'm doing oh and before I dress it up I am actually going to put my tofu that I had into the soup so they just warms up right now it's kind of boiling and I don't want it to cook anymore because uh, the more it cooks it more concentrated it becomes it becomes saltier and that's not what I want so once it warms up it's fine now before I started I had opened this packet of uh, ingredients just kind of letting it kind of thaw out itself uh, it has not been in the microwave, it hasn't been temperature treated or anything like that. So it is just, it's still a bit cold and it's okay. Because um, before we put everything in the packet, we actually cooked everything. So this is all pre-cooked. And so if you just kind of open it, kind of let it sit on the counter and let it thaw out and it'll be perfect to use. So I'm just going to turn you this way to see how I'm plating. So here is my noodle. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to first, I'm going to first put our soup inside. I'm going to my ladle. So this one is a miso bake, a miso soup. So here's my tofu that I love, and then I'm going to put in my carrots, and the carrot is raw of course, and I'm going to put in my shoyu. Now the, the portion that you have in your kit is a two portion uh, ingredient, so you can just kind of separate them between the two bowls of soup. And I put the nabuku at the end, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to uh, stack these guys up. So at Nomiya, we always say stack everything like a mountain. So 3D structure is the best. So I'm going to put my sprouts kind of on the side here. Then I'm going to put my mushrooms. always really sit in the soup because it adds an additional aroma. Then, lastly, of course, our egg. Now, the, tr the trick to plating, and everybody is different, all the different restaurants are real different, is that, uh, you know, when you plate, you plate towards the way you present. So in this case, uh, I'm presenting it this way, so then I'm pleading everything sliding to me. So if you are going to go gourmet ramen at home, I want to impress your guests or even your significant other or your family, just plate it the way you would want it to look. Basically, I often say the sexy way, right? And so to me, it looks good like this. You may want to, you may want to plate it differently. And, um, and I've actually forgot to season my oyster mushrooms. I'm just going to quickly season it. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to the egg as well. It looks like I don't have a lot of soup there, so I'm just going to add just a little bit more soup. And then lastly, we finish with a Naruto. Naruto basically is a fish cake, and it has this little pink swirl in it. And it's... Uh, it's it's actually it's an important piece to a ramen dish. It looks like this, and then I just put it place on the top, and there you go. Voila, Nomia at home ramen kit. So enjoy. We will. I would love to see what you come up with. You know, in your own creation. Um, yeah, share it on social media with us. So bon appetit. See you soon.